today. Welcome to Dinner for Dad, episode number four. Today I am cooking my dad's most favorite dish. It's another Italian one. Um, it's called, the traditional name is called Melanzane alla Parmigiana. Um, and what it is is eggplant parmesan. So in order to spare you all the boring details, uh, I went ahead and pre-cooked the eggplant. Um, I left a little bit to show you guys the process. I'm gonna show you the process of cooking the eggplant. Um, one of the keys here is making sure that it's sliced pretty thin. Um, and then um, just cooking it in hot olive oil. And what you want is for it to brown like these ones here. So hot olive oil, thin sliced, and uh, you got yourself some amazing eggplant. The sauce, sauce for the eggplant is a marinara. And I'm going to direct you back to episode one where I did meatballs with marinara. I did the exact same sauce. This is my go-to marinara sauce. Um, quick reminder, all it is, very simple can of crushed tomatoes. Uh, where the tomatoes were grown in Italy fresh basil, I'm pointing to my basil plant, uh, fresh basil, butter, and salt to taste. And that is it. And it's goddamn amazing. You wanna try? No, I'm good. You sure? Okay. Yep. it's fucking good. All right, so we're um, waiting for these guys to brown and I forgot to tell you that there was an onion, there was half an onion in the sauce. Not as simple as I made it. But that's all I forgot to tell you. All right, so the thinner ones are gonna cook faster, they're gonna brown, woo! Tip of the day. Be careful when frying things in hot oil. It's like tip of the day for an idiot. Obviously, be careful of trying things, but it hurts. I got squirted in the eye <laughs> earlier. Don't laugh. I really did. Um, you can tell when these are done because they sort of start to curl up like so, and, and like I said, they brown. Fun story, I was at the uh, supermarket the other day, Winco, the local Winco, and a man and his wife came up to me and they said, oh shit, dinner for dad. And I was like, yeah, that's me. It was kind of amazing. I was like, I'm famous in Bremerton. I'm Bremerton famous. I've never been famous for anything in my life, so thank you for your support. Ow. Whatever you want. <laughs> Glad my cameraman got a good laugh out of that one. Nico, we're gonna need some aloe vera. <laughs> Birthday kit. Okay. So now is the fun part. People always think that this dish is very complicated to make, but it's just a little bit time consuming um, frying up all the eggplant. But other than that, it is so simple. So next thing that we're gonna do, actually I like to layer it, make sure the flavor just gets like fully infused. So I'm gonna just take like the top layer off here, not that much for the top, top layer. And then, I'm going to smother in this amazing 35 years. They worked together at Boeing, um, and 
actually, funny story, follow me in here real quick. The, Go with you fast. Go Sorry, back. So Go back. Okay. Start over. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You gotta watch. Just come at me, man. Sorry. <laughs> That's how Mika almost we died. Worked together right. at Boeing okay. for um, for many, many, many years. And actually, fun story. So his name is Dennis. He's um, staying. He's staying over for for about a week, helping Dad out with a project. But I got home last night and saw this loan whiskey bottle on the table with a level on top and I just was like what the fuck did these two get into? That's what happens when two engineers sit around and get drunk. Wow. wow. Yeah. Melanzane alla parmigiana. Brava. Ah. Let me get a serving thing. Con una birra. This is feeding daddy. I think you guys are probably hungry because you've been working outside all day. Yeah, it's your served a nice uh, pickles and peanut lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's my style of uh, But there was, there was a little cheddar cheese out there. Right? Oh, yeah, and, and if he's really, um, really splurging, he might throw in like a grape or two. <laughs> yeah, I stole some this morning. Okay, buon appetito. All right, buon appetito. Don't burn your tongue. Yeah, careful. Don't bruciare la lingua. Again. So um, I was thinking, so we usually have like a dinner conversation yeah. for this part. Um, so I was thinking that uh, since we have you as a guest, it would be fun to hear about like how you guys first started being friends and maybe if you have any like funny stories oh, right. that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have some we have some funny stories. We're that in the process a of a mutual divide and, and as far as our, our careers are going and what we're gonna do. Yeah. We actually we weren't we weren't really buddies down in the machine shop I was in the machine shop Jim was in tool cutter grade. We knew each other. But we didn't really have much conversation, so we both went up to standard tool, mm -hmm. standard tooling. And so Dennis has been a, a dear friend for, what, 35, 40 years? Yeah. At least 35. Anyway, I tend to be a very serious person. Who, are you? <laughs> <laughs> but... I used to be worse. <laughs> and I credit Dennis for for um I credit company rules for keeping from hitting me. <laughs> yeah, but I, I credit him with the with the fortitude and the endurance to to try to help me not be so serious. And I didn't even know that he was doing that. I'm not sure he was intentionally doing it. That's just his nature. <laughs> but uh, one incident that, that finally made me realize that this is something you gotta laugh at. You can't, you can't just get serious and upset about everything and be rigidly on the track. Anyway, we were sitting across the aisle in, in, in standard tool design, and Dennis yells over at me, Hey Jim, because I used to always bring a Twix bar for a snack in the afternoon. He says, Hey Jim, can I have half of that Twix in your desk? I said, well, You fucking asshole, what are you doing in my desk? <laughs> To know that I have a Twix in there. <laughs> so I opened the drawer. No, no, you, you answered me first. I said, sure. Yeah. <laughs> of course, because I'm a nice guy. I'm generous. And, you know, 
kind heart. <laughs> anyway, did you see how kind hearted I was after I opened the drawer? And half of the fucking Twix was already gone. <laughs> So, you know, there's two rolls. <laughs> so he wanted half of the half that he had left me. <laughs> no, I, I thought he just wanted to fuck with you. Fuck with me, man. <laughs> Big time. And so were you actually mad? Oh, man. No. <laughs> no, I, I, that's what I said. That was the very of, first reaction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then the I just realized, you know, <laughs> so this, is, this is humor. This is. You know, you got to take some things lightly. And from then on, I, I think I had a little different outlook hmm. on life. You were a lot more serious back then. I were. You were. <laughs> now he's a regular comedian. Yeah. Yesterday, he, uh, um, we, we caught some crab, and he ate half of it for dinner. And I was like, "Thanks for saving me some crab." Yeah. And he was like, well, it would have been shellfish of me to eat it all. <laughs> he just like that. Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. No, great doesn't describe it. It's magnifico. Woohoo! Um, okay, I have a question for you guys. Um, I came home last night and saw this lone whiskey bottle on the table with the level strategically placed on top. I was wondering if there was a story to it, to engineer guys drinking whiskey and making sure. I did, I feel like there's a story, or was it just? This was an added feature to a fancy $10,000 framey job he had over here. Yeah. And that oh, came geez. with the with the framed, up the framed painting for him to Oh. Mount a level on the wall and help facilitate the knotting process. Oh. Yeah, you stick it on the top and then it's got a couple of, of hangers that slide into a couple of brackets on the back. And the idea is you put it on the wall with the level on it and then you push on it and it makes two little holes so then you know where to nail the holes and theoretically it'll be perfectly level. Oh. But these walls are stuckle. Harder to go up to hell. Uh, I mean, you can hardly get a nail through it, <laughs> let alone a little plastic dimple. Uh, so the design is totally, totally worthless for, for wow. this house. So it ended up on the whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could tell a story about wanting to make sure that we were pouring it uh, level, but, but that wouldn't, wouldn't be the Just to make sure you get the yeah. pork back in square. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, we lived in Arlington, uh, we grew up to third grade in Arlington? Uh, sixth grade. Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Sixth grade. Yeah. Yeah, I've known you since I was born, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. One night, I hope we do a dinner for Dad with crab. But what we used to do in Arlington, because it was kind of far from the, from the sea, not that far, but a little further than this. We used to go out and I'd take my scuba tanks and I'd dive down and fill up this big bag full of crawdads. In the river? In the river, yeah. The river that we used to fish in? Yeah, so oh. sure. And so we'd bring them back, put them, dump them all in a pot, and they'd turn bright orange red. And we eat that as poor man's lobster. Delicious, but a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is amazing is those, those crawdads are bigger than the ones. I've got a few uh, Chitty Whoopie Kitty kids from New Orleans, and uh, she does feed every summer. Mm -hmm. The ones she gets imported in are smaller. Oh, they're not as good. Either. Oh, so. Hmm. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> so, um, will you guys explain to me what your arrangement of helping each other with projects is? Because I've been noticing that Dad goes out there for a few days and helps you. You just yeah, have I have a propensity of visualizing something complete and being quite satisfied at that point. Of the <laughs> <laughs> I 
So I have to go and otherwise his wife gets gets upset with him and me. <laughs> so I have to go and help him actually finish it. Because the man's a genius. He's got, well, this, the kind of genius that I've told him, this, <laughs> told him this before. The 25% of his ideas are, you know, divinely inspired genius. The other 75% are batshit crazy. Sounds <laughs> like a genius. Help yourself to more if you want more. <clears throat> so he can visualize, not only visualize the completed project, but visualize every manufacturing step along the way to get it there. But he, he can't actually do it. <laughs> that takes time and money. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot more fun to look at the solutions than it is to actually accomplish the task. <laughs> yeah, that's where but you always learn to accomplish the task. Mm -hmm. It's always a learning process. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. If you only visualize it, you can't be wrong. You can't make a mistake. True. Nobody like, can hey, why don't you get a website? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to wrap up the video portion. Um, Why? Well, we're just getting started. You want home more stories? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, thank you guys for joining Dinner for Dad. And um, to the viewers, uh, I am looking for you guys to send me pictures of um, your recreations of my meals and also um, send me meal ideas if you want me to make anything that you like or if you want me to turn anything that you like that is carby into low carbs um, and remember please to go to Rotcast on YouTube R-O-T-T-C-A-S-T um, on YouTube, that's my producer, and that's where all of the Dinner for Dad stuff lives, and he's got some cool stuff, other stuff, too. I love that you have a little cheat sheet there. I know! <laughs> <laughs> my producer made me do it. <laughs> my least favorite part. All right.